Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Seven words. Seven, it's not a magical number really, but, but the point is that we introduced last week is that we need a, a short but sweet, meaningful, quick hitter, you might say, uh, for the sake of those who are living and dying in sin, uh, for our brothers and sisters who sometimes need reminders, and for our own sake, for that matter, we need a short and sweet yet substantive summary of the good news of our salvation. Um, being prepared is not my idea. It comes from God through the Apostle Peter, as we saw last week. He said, um, always be prepared, but always be prepared in your hearts to give an answer to anyone, uh, a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason, for the hope that is in you, yet do this with gentleness and respect. Um, we're a summary or a snippet of the gospel. Now, right, a summary doesn't include everything. A uh, summary tries to bring some of the most important points forward, and it kind of, it almost teases or intrigues people. Well, we want the gospel, when we share it with other people, we want it to be something personal, because after all, right, Jesus is personal uh, to us. So here's our, our question, and you can, uh, what, what is it about the gospel that we might say, matters to you. Why does the gospel matter to you personally? Um, or uh, what stories or verses are important or helpful? Or maybe just a simple concept or a, a word if you, um, what you appreciate, others might appreciate too. So what, what are, what are the, any answers to those questions? What, what is it that you appreciate about your Savior, or about Jesus? Or are there any Verses are things that um, are particularly important that you find comforting uh, or helpful. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the how person. Yeah. That God. Didn't have to come down, but did, yeah. Are there, is there anything about your faith that you find that, that is comforting? Maybe we can get one, one or two more out of us. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so, you know, Jesus. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that. The Lord is our shepherd, yeah. yeah. There you go, that's a pretty important part of it. Yeah, he died on the cross for us. Um, yeah, so those are, those are and, and that's maybe, again, we put the pressure on to, to, you know, to think about those things. What is it about your faith that makes it important to you? Um, okay, why did my, um, there we go. Uh, now, uh, there are different things we might say. Um, one thing that we probably, that, well, not probably, one important thing to include somewhere uh, in our, our faith for Christians is a confession of our faith often, pretty soon thereafter, includes a confession of our sins. What I mean by that is that we recognize, right, especially during a month during Lent when it's more of a contemplative and we come specifically in mind, knowing that we are mortal, that we're not always perfect, that's, um, we know and confess that we sin sometimes. Our, our hearts and our minds are attracted to the wrong sorts of things sometimes. It's not just that we do the wrong thing, it's sometimes we want to do the wrong thing. We need, we need help, we need rescue from, from this world and all the evil that goes on, and we admit that sometimes we need someone to rescue us from our, our own selves, from our own hearts uh, and minds. Um, in the article I mentioned last week, there were a number of good and, and faithful summaries of the gospel 
that I'd like to look into once again. Um, so could I have, would somebody read the first one for us? Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, in Christ, God's yes defeats our no. And um, you notice that Jesus is kind of central to both of these. Uh, and I think I would anyway, personally, maybe other people could, but I would ha have a hard time making a confession of my faith and not getting Jesus in there somewhere. Um, right? That's crucial. But notice they're not only about Jesus. They say something about us, too. To be more specific, they point out something that's wrong with us. God defeats our no. Um, God defeats our no. What does that mean? Well, that no that is our no is like a child sometimes, got, when you call them, they, a young child may say no. You know? and that's how we sometimes respond to God. He calls us. He tells us to do this. We say no. He says, come here. We say no. Well, we, we do it in little ways, big ways. Uh, and, but the good news is that God's, what this is getting at is that God's love is bigger than our defiance. Uh, it's bigger than our sin. Um, then could I have someone read the second one there? All right, Greg. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so God through Jesus Christ welcomes you anyhow. And that anyhow, it almost sounds kind of funny, but I think it draws your attention to it too. And that's, uh, again, the same sort of thing. That's our disobedience, we might put it. God clearly speaks to us in, in the scriptures, and yet so often we disobey him. Uh, we have given him re many reasons where he might want to steer away from us. Uh, the way we treat one another, our failure to follow him particularly well, and the way in which instead of giving him glory, we are, uh, seek to give ourselves all the glory and make idols of ourselves. That anyhow in there is a confession that even though we have no right, we, don't, we can't really expect anything of God, Nevertheless, he welcomes us. Um, and both of these descriptions highlight uh, one of the main points we want to make today, uh, that, and that is that things aren't always right. We're not always right. Um, and that's important because the gospel begins with the fact that this world and each of us aren't right. Uh, um, this, it's important for us to acknowledge this as we share the gospel with others uh, so it's important not to come off as if we're better than everybody else to admit that we, too, have uh, shortcomings. We, too, have a need for a Savior. It leads us to, to humbly confess that we're just as guilty as anybody else. Um, people who don't see anything wrong with the way things are or who don't see anything wrong with themselves, they're, they're probably never going to think they really need a savior, but we confess and admit that we do. Um, so a pivotal step in crafting our own description uh, in seven words might be to think about how to convey our universal need for a savior. It doesn't have to necessarily be the first thing we say, but it needs to be clear somewhere in our conversations with people. And uh, after we've communicated the problem, the next step is simple and, and joyful, as we've been hinting at, we preach Christ crucified and risen. Paul said, it's good news that we have. And we want to communicate that it's good news that God gives us. We admit our sin, but nevertheless, we have a great gift from, from our God. It's not just uh, that he saves us from sin, death, and the devil. He also um, saves us from, from meaninglessness, from, from loneliness, from our brokenness in different ways. He restores us. He, he renews us. He brings us back to himself. That's the good news, which is what the word gospel literally means. It means good news. The good news is that God was in Christ Jesus reconciling the world to himself. And that was part of our, our reading for today. Could I have somebody read... Um, right. Sure. Yeah.
Reconciliation, yep. All right, thank you. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself um, or reconciling the world. And uh, God, through Jesus, came to the world to reconcile, to make uh, so many things that are, are not the way they should be to begin the process of, of fixing those things, to right the wrongs that we have done or had done, to restore a broken creation, a creation that God loves, uh, but is not, we don't always treat as well as we ought to. This is a reminder that we are dearly loved by God, our Heavenly Father, and we are forgiven through faith in His Son. God was in Christ reconciling the world. In fact, that's uh, a summary in seven words or less, too. God was in Christ reconciling the world. And this highlights that Jesus didn't come just for you or for me. He didn't just come to reconcile us. He came for all. God came to bring all of us back to the Father. And that contains the heart of the good news and might be a good starting point for conversation with others. Well, um, hopefully uh, we've highlighted that's, that this is one feature we want to try to get into, uh, into conversations, an essential element of, of our faith. And now, uh, pastors and confirmation teachers love giving out homework. I tried to make it relatively simple. And the first is simply pray. Sometime you can, you can do more than one, but I invite you sometime during the week away from worship service, pray that God would help you to be a witness to others, you know, and that might happen in a different ways. Um, but sometimes when you ask God for something, he gives it to you. So I invite you to pray sometime during the week away from church that God would use you as a positive witness to others. Um, uh, I also ask that you would pray that God helps you whatever way. Maybe, it doesn't, it, maybe it's not going to end up that everyone's going to have this fancy seven-word statement. But again, I do think it would be helpful to have something simple that we know, that we can just pull out at any time. Um, and pray that God would help you to, if nothing else, to think about your faith and how to, how to share, that word, share that faith and maybe to come up with something that is personal and short, uh, but also packs a punch, we might say. Um, and I pray that you also think about uh, that seven-word summary that we had today that is true, that God was in Christ reconciling the world. Um, and remember that he came not just for you and me, but for all. Um, of course, we don't want to limit ourselves to just this particular way of, of speaking. We're going to consider other ways and look at other uh, angles uh, which to share the gospel. And uh, I also included, if you want a little extra credit, uh, if, you want to, if you really want to get serious ab about this and try to have something, maybe jot down some notes about something that jumps out at you during the week. Or maybe you don't want to, j maybe you don't jot down notes, but try to, to be aware, to be Think about when something, something again, apart from church, strikes you. Um, and uh, maybe it's a verse or it's a song, uh, a Christian song of some sort that, that speaks to you, and, and think about that. Um, but uh, until then, we remember that in Christ, God was reconciling the world and you as well. In Jesus' name, amen.